but we thought we'd come back and do some drawing. I've got Manny Carrasco, I've got Peter Hahn, and we thought it would be a really cool idea to come back and do some drawing and just bring you in on an experience. We're going to share some of the experiences that we've had today uh, and yesterday and the day before and uh, and just bring you in on it and talk to you about how we what we do on these trips and, and all that kind of thing. So why don't you follow me? We're going to go into the, uh, into the apartment. We've got Dustin here as well. And Nick is handling the camera. Hello. Oh, and by the way, it's Peter Hans and Mandy's birthday. Peter Hahn was a couple days ago and Mandy is today. So you got to wish him a happy birthday. Speaking of which, we're not going to be able to reply to questions because we can't Oh, that's see. right. Yeah, we can't do questions only because we're not able to read them. The, the internet here is going to be bad. But here, we got the guys. Here's everyone here. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, guys. How's it going? And so this is our little, our little lodge that we rented for the, uh, for the, for the duration. And uh, we've got a little picnic table we thought it would be kind of fun. We pulled up our reference. Um, when we go out and we draw, we draw from life. And we've shown you that, that, you know, in the past. And, uh, and so we've been doing a lot of rough sketching from life. But then when we come back at night, we like to take our sketches. We like to take our photographs and everything and do more refined uh, drawing with our reference, but also using some of that muscle memory, some of that, uh, that video. Sit down and do something a little bit more finished. And so that's what we're going to do here today. And, uh, and then just talk about our experiences, right guys? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. One time in Yellowstone. Yes, 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 yes. Cheers. Yep, cheers guys. Cheers. We got a little uh, Buffalo Trace Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. <laughs> wow. Don't drink if you're underage. It's always dangerous to my friends. So I've got, uh, this is a, a mother grizzly with two cubs that we came across. Uh, Dustin got a really great shot of it. I just really thought that'd be fun to draw. And uh, Manny's got a I coyote. I got a coyote here. One of Dustin's shots. I couldn't transfer any photos over to my iPad yet, so. Get the bighorn sheep. This is from yesterday. So those amazing herd just rolling across that hill. Yeah, that male lion, the male, one of the giant bighorns, the male, the dominant male kept looking back and yeah. was scared away with something, so. Yeah. I'm going to show you guys some of the footage we got so far. Let's go ahead and... You're seeing a screen of a screen, so I apologize if it's a... <laughs> it's oh. the son of a son of a sailor. <laughs> Let's try that again. So this morning, we saw a bear cub... Black bear cub climbing a tree. It was the coolest thing. Mama was right behind him. Little twins. Little twins. Now she had two cubs with her. I actually got a real nice shot here of the of the cub sticking his head out of the uh, the drain. Oh, you did get it. Yeah. Like yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Aaron did some oh, yeah. drawing right there on the spot. <laughs> I keep that. Yeah. So we did some drawing. These are. Uh, oh, actually, go ahead and keep filming that, and I'll show, I'll, we'll show later what we do on location. I'm going to love the smell of that whiskey. <laughs> there was a grizzly, and she had two cubs with her. Pretty far distance from them, so video is a little grainy. Yeah, we had to, uh, you know, they have very strict rules about engagement with the wildlife here, and especially the big, uh, the big predators, and uh, such as grizzlies and black bears, and especially mamas with cubs. It's even more strict. Then we went down. We saw some harlequin ducks, which were cool down by the. There's a waterfall there. A lot of restriction with those two. Yep. Stay with them. <laughs> Plenty of bison. Did a live stream yesterday. Some of you on YouTube may have caught it. We were live for about 30 minutes yesterday out in the field. Oh, and this was cool. This was a wolf. He came up, he swam across that lake, climbed up on that log, shook off. And there was a buffalo carcass right nearby, and he went over and started eating it. 
But that's enough of that. Let's see what these guys are up to. So these are some of the rough, this is what we would do on location. So you can see these are quite a bit more rough. So these are the ones that I drew as I was looking at the mama bear and her cubs, getting different poses, getting gestures, that sort of thing. So I have at least a, a notion of their form and that sort of thing when I come back to draw. And now I sit down and I'm using a very light number three Copic marker to rough in their rough shape, just like a gesture. And then I'll go in later with a pen and, uh, and tie them down. And we apologize if the stream goes down at all. We are streaming digitally, so we're not quite sure. Or right, streaming digitally. We're streaming off of cell phone signal, so. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the mountains. Out in, in the mountains, in Montana. I'm using a chisel point uh, Copic here. Gives me the uh, accidents that I need to not stay so true to the photograph. So all of us are using permanent tools, but I always get that question of why. You know, why don't we use like pencils and stuff like this, which are great tools in itself, but you know, I have my own notions. What about you guys? I just like the permanency of like a, with a pen. You, you put the pen down, you're done. Yeah. I, I I haven't drawn with pencils since I don't know college. Yeah, to, to me, it's a, a problem solving, Peter. Yeah. You know, like I I uh, set a line down, and I have to figure out if I get something wrong, I have to figure out how to correct that or yeah. what to do. Yeah. But uh, I've done so many gestures and so much drawing that I'm pretty comfortable with not. You say you put down lines that are wrong. I do. <laughs> Most of the lines are wrong. Aaron's like, what's that like? Yeah. Come on, man. Because I think there's always that concern from young people who assume that they all of a sudden be so perfect with the pen and the two, and they think it's the only way to train. I mean, of course, it's a great way to build confidence. Um, yeah, that whole idea of permanent, permanence within the line is interesting. Yeah, I D love it. Dustin, what are you working on? I am currently working on editing the photos of the black bear and the her cubs that we got today. In fact, just finished this this uh, edit. Here's the original, and as you can see, it was able to bring out all the all the fur out, and it can shrink it out down quite a bit, in which I do quite a lot with this camera. It's a lot of cropping involved, but it does bring back bring the composition that I really want. And again, I apologize. We're not able to see your questions. I'm sure some of you are asking them. We're just not able to see them right now. So this is going to be sort of a one-way conversation more so than normal. Um, if I can call them up here <clears throat> on another device, I might try to do that. But the signal here has been really spotty. So we're just not able to watch the stream while we do it. I so. nor normally I pull it up on my phone, but I'm using my phone for my reference. My reference. My reference. So actually, you can pull yours up on, on your phone, Justin. Maybe see if, see if I can do that. So what are you drawing, Peter? It's the, uh, oh, the, the big, big one sheet. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's coming out nice. Using the uh, Pigma FB pen from Sakura. Felt tip, uh, soft and squishy, so it gives me a lot of line variation. Yeah, it's like me, soft and yeah, squishy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Did a pre-sketch earlier. Uh, it wasn't necessarily for this piece. It's just because I had, All right. I don't know, big horn sheep on my so mind. I got so some of the face face face. still talking. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. But I uh, got some uh, Facebook questions here uh, from Jay Price. Hi guys, hope you're uh, enjoying your trip. Any uh, tips on how to draw a wolf running towards you in three quarters? I was meant to ask you last week, but Facebook was down. Yes, um, you got, but you gotta, you gotta do it from life. You gotta live it. So what you do is you go out to Yellowstone and you bring a couple of pork chops and you tie them around your neck <laughs> and you put yourself out there and you gotta wait and that sucker will come out there and then you gotta run. Yeah. That and that's how you do it. Seared and right. Just run like the wind. Put a, go <laughs> put a GoPro on your back. But you'll, <laughs> never, for you'll back. never forget that. <laughs> By so the way, I'm kidding just so we can cover ourselves. You're building that visual library. <laughs> You know, that's for a question like that. You know, it's it's not something we can just tell you how to do. It's something you gotta you gotta research and and you know if you can't see the animal in the wild, then obviously you want to find the video. Anything you can that's going to help you uh, fill in the information that. Let's you see need. what you're drawing, Aaron. I don't think I've actually shown, shown your drawings yet. 
So I'm uh, doing this mama. I just laid it in very lightly with this number three Copic marker. And so now that I got it kind of roughed in, then I'm going to go in and I'm starting to blacken it all in. And uh, Cisco JC says, Aaron Blaze is left-handed? Cool. Always have been. And always will. <laughs> Would be yeah, it's funny. Funny thing about it, my whole family's left-handed. My father's left-handed. My mother's left-handed. My brother's left-handed. Is Travis? Yeah, Travis is left-handed. Yeah. Oh, you said my brother. Okay. I wonder if. Did that guarantee, because your mother and father were both left-handed, that did that guarantee you both would be left-handed? Is that? No, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I actually have, I come, there's, there's nine siblings in my family, um, a lot of half-brothers and sisters, and it, my, my full brother, full-blooded brother is the only one that's left-handed. Well, that's because you had the, that same parents. That's what made me wonder if, yeah, exactly. you know, it's probably unusual for... Too unusual. And this is part of our routine. We love to get out. Well, obviously, the, the, our favorite part of this is getting out in the field and just finding the wildlife. There's, there's no better high and excitement than doing that. But then we, we come back at night and we tend to wind down, especially when we're in Africa. Um, we come back and wind down and we start talking about the day's events and we draw and we just have a really great time. How many days has it been already? Two? Two days. Yeah, yeah it, 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 like, a, a like a day and a half. It's only been a day and a half. But it's weird. It's only been a day and a half, but weird have seen a lot. Well, you've seen so much in a day and a half. That's the beauty of Yellowstone, right? Yeah. You know, the expectations and the surprises. I mean, we came in in our first two hours that we were here, we came across that wolf on that bison kill. Yeah. Sorry about the shaky camera, guys. I don't have a... Uh... Steady camera, anything with me? Oh man, I, I had one. Shoot. That's it, Manny. Would you please leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's always that mentality that people assume that I can't go to these places. You know, they're too far, too expensive. You can't go right now. But yeah, that's a good point. But that's just, I think, a lame excuse. I mean. Yeah, it's not. It's especially if it's something you really want to do. Yeah. You know, Yellowstone is very easy to get to it's if, totally if you're if, if you're based in the United States. Yeah, true. Um, if you're not based in the United States, there's, you know, wherever it is that you are, there's, there's a that lot of natural something. places to get out to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes it could be just right at your front door. Yeah, absolutely. Just the ability to step out and not be stuck in your room in front of a computer all day. And that's what we really recommend. Even if you just go out to the park or wherever, you know, get out and, and draw from life. Get out and, and, you know, look at the world around you. I'm 53 now, and I've just and I, I just can't do this enough, and I think I do it more now than I did when I was younger. Yeah. How are we looking on questions, Dustin? Anything? Um, or do, do they auto scroll? Yeah. One. Well, a comment to uh, uh, Peter from Jade. Hi, uh, Peter. Han, I learned a lot of your drawing prob uh, problem solving during lockdown. Can't wait to start drawing uh, trips again once uh, we are allowed to. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, even with this, I mean, we're outdoors right now. And we're with friends, and, you know, obviously we're all vaccinated and stuff like that. And we are conscious of things like spaces and people in big groups and whatnot. So, social distancing. Uh, no, absolutely. But, yeah, let's reiterate that. I just want to make sure because we get a lot of flack from people. All of us are vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, we're still going to wear a mask, and especially yes, when we go exactly. outdoors and stuff like that. But being in the outdoors, you know, with you know, our own group constantly, you know, we're in control of that. So it makes us feel comfortable that we can still get together and be a part of something like this. Um, right. And at some point, you got to make that move. And, and if you're constantly just in fear and, and just being able to step out, it be hard to transition away from that life that we're all starting to become very settled into. <laughs> just staying indoors, staying inside of a room. Yep, becoming introverts. I just busted my kneecap. That was wonderful. I felt that. Yeah, yeah, that I felt awesome. that all the way up in my butt talks. <laughs> oh, man. I got a shot in the butt talk. Right on the chair. Right on the chair. Bench seat.
So for me, I'm pretty much at the point where line work wise, I'm relatively close to being done. And I'm actually gonna move into a watercolor, just do a quick wash stuff. Yeah, that's the other thing we should talk about a little bit is some of the materials that we bring with us. Yeah. You know, you can see we've got uh, drawing pads and, and, and drawing utensils, but um, like Peter's doing there, we bring watercolors, we bring paints. Um, I've got a really cool thing here that I carry with me. I'm sure Peter has something like this. Is that a watercolor set? Yeah. The Cotman, you ever use yeah, these? Well, I use the Windsor. Oh, yeah. Windsor. yeah. Windsor. That is yeah, a Windsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yours is the newer model. Yeah. yeah. Is that, oh, what does that mean? You, guys you can still get both. Did I just drop something? Or did I don't you know. Many. Oh. You color. But these are really cool because it, it's very, very compact. You put it in your pocket and it opens up and all of a sudden it's got a little clip right here that can clip on the top of the... Uh, the paint box and then on the back I've got a little loop where I can put my thumb through it and hold it like this like so, like so and then I've got a little palette here and you put your water in here and this part of the palette is actually a bottle that holds water you put the water in there you got a little paintbrush right here and you can sit and paint and it's very very handy to be out in the field and do quick little washes little sketches I'm carrying something much bigger <laughs> this is my watercolor tin a whole range of colors in here. This is a, a gift as well uh, from uh, Hyunjin from the Superani crew. It's actually from two years ago on my birthday, actually, I got this one. But um, pretty selected, like, palette, and I've been using this one for a little bit. Man, he's doing push ups. I was doing push ups. <laughs> Trying to wake yourself up. You need more whiskey. The little color of that. Then it'll be a push up competition. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Bad night. Nice picture of the uh Oh that's gorgeous. Little cute little cub. Did you guys see this one? Where you got yeah. the oh, shallow man. depth of field. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It's actually got painting. And for anybody that's wondering, uh all these were shot with this camera here, which is the Sony Alpha hey, One. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Sorry. <laughs> and the lens I use is actually the lens right over. You can just tell us. It's a Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. Awesome. And it's huge. I'm currently doing Aaron's Wolf course on my laptop and watching this live stream on my phone at the same time. Crazy. Yeah, and, crazy. And uh, Nick Hiesel's asking, have any of you done any underwater photography or like any uh, shark cave diving? I would love to. No. I did. I, you know, I've never done... A, in that a ton, but when I was uh, living on the beach a few years ago, I was doing a lot of uh, just free diving and snorkeling on the reef that was there. So a lot of sharks, a lot of turtles, a lot of really cool stuff. You know, having grown up in Florida, I've kind of grown up around that stuff, and it's always fun to have access to it. Yeah, I would love to do underwater photography, but that requires a lot of additional gear that I would need to get together in order for that to work. But definitely something I plan on doing in the future. I'm just about to sign up for a certification for scuba. Oh yeah? Yeah. Nice. So it should be fun. For those that didn't tune in yesterday that might not have seen the, the brief little stream, what pen is that again that you're using there? Manny? That's, Me, this that's... is a Kurataki refillable. I'm not sure what the uh, actual name of the pen is. It was a gift from Peter. And uh, Peter tends to do that, he gives us all these really yeah. cool, cool <laughs> but uh, it's a refillable curb talkie. Yeah, this is the ink that we're using, it's that platinum carbon ink. I use this to fill pretty much every other pen brush pens, fountain pens, stat pen. Yeah, so this is this is a it's it's nice to try out new new stuff. Do you find that? Uh, sorry, anything yeah, no, no, it's, it's it's just fun to try out new stuff and it, it's got a different feel, something new. Uh, Peter, do you use refillable ink and use that ink because you find it to be more economical or because you prefer that ink or is it both? Economical and not as wasteful. Yeah. You know, I buy thousands of, you know, felt-tip pens and stuff like this and they're great tools and I use them for classes and teaching. But, you know, for me, after 10 years of doing this kind of stuff teaching-wise, you can imagine how much plastic waste I go through. So I tend to kind of carry like fountain pens and stuff like this, or refillable pens, because I know that this will, if I take care of it, last me a lifetime. So yeah, I'll spend a couple hundred dollars on something like this, and people are like, I can't spend that much on a pen, but 
if it's a lifelong product, I'm saving much more compared to spending you know, on stuff like this, which I'll buy uh, here and there because I can't get certain kind of lines uh, with this tool as I would with this one, but I'm conscious of what I'm getting. Do you guys want to show again, because everybody watching now probably didn't see yesterday, <clears throat> not to interrupt your train of thought, but do we want to maybe show some of the stuff yeah. that we did earlier? Sure. sure. Maybe Peter show his first since he's a little further along in his oh, yeah, image, yeah. image, and then we'll come I mean, back to you guys. Right now, in terms of the trip, I'm thinking of what I'm going to carry with me, of course, and I'm usually having a small pack. Uh, I flew from LAX to here, so uh, I have one suitcase and one carry-on bag, so I want to keep it as light as possible. I carry one fresh new sketchbook with every new trip, because uh, I want to just have a, a different kind of paper I'm playing with, or because it's going to be a different theme for this sketchbook. So this one in particular, it, it was started here on this trip already. This is, you know, observation of like trucks and stuff, and I'll draw everything from animals to landscapes to vehicles and people. So anything that catches my eye visually, I want to, you know, I gravitate towards it. Then of course drawing on location with the animals as well, uh, from you know the bears and stuff, and all this stuff being distance. A lot of the perspective is very flat, so we're not really pushing so much on depth and space. Uh, more just based on silhouettes and value, if anything else. Um, and then once we get interesting shots that are a little bit closer, maybe we can kind of push that. And even then, I'll even use a little bit of imagination to push the camera around a bit more as well. But um, all this will be again. This is now from reference photographs. I also start another headshot reference photographs. But in the meantime, I also would then carry other sketchbooks just for my. I can kind of outside personal work. So this is a personal sketchbook that I started, you know, last year, and I carry this one because I'm still filling filling it up. Uh, so oh, these are awesome. I while those great. yeah, while I'm drawing <laughs> here from observation, I'll get inspiration from that and apply it here. So this is all, you know, from my head, these sketches and drawings and creating creatures and animals that are not obviously real, but they're inspired by reality, right? So that's cool. That's why I like to carry dual books like this. Um, and that's, you know, pretty much about it. Wait. Yesterday's, for me, yesterday's stuff was a lot of doodling. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So this is a really cheap, oh, there's one of my quick lines. And I, I don't know if there was something on the other side. This is something that we started and we left. But here we go. So this is a super cheap sketchbook that I bought that I love the paper. A bunch of the doodles. I carry kind of limited. See, these are just line gestures. Those are so nice. Yeah. We're sitting near the same bison for a bit. And today I decided not to draw a bison because I've been drawing bison, so I'm <laughs> going with the uh, coyote. As far as what I carry, um, I always carry markers with me, not necessarily any brand. I really like these new sketch markers. It's a company out of Russia, I believe. And uh, it's watermark. literally just called sketch marker. Huh? Sketch marker, brush, <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, I really love their brush pin. It's really nice and flexible. Gives you nice, nice lines. I like going with a, a, a light color because I, I, I don't feel like I commit to whatever I put down. I can keep moving my lines around. Um, I carry stuff to highlight with, I guess a lot like Aaron, some white, and then uh, a backpack full of uh, sketchbooks. And again, like Peter, um, I like to try out new, new sketchbooks. So I just buy a variety. This is a really cool, oh, and I dropped uh, our supplies everywhere. I'll share this with you guys. This is a um, handmade sketchbook. This, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> that, 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 this book kills me. <laughs> so this is a handmade sketchbook from Italy that I found from a company called Epica. And, uh, Epica? Epica. E if it's the last thing we do, we're going to make sure that Manny publishes it. So this is, uh, a lot of you know that I follow mountain lions a lot. I track them. I've always been fascinated with them. If you guys keep up with me, I've been tracking a, a big male and a female with a kit. And these are just, uh, this is almost like cloth. It's handmade paper. The texture's incredible. I've wet, I've wet it down, dampened it, using a lot of alcohol on it with markers, etc. This is a combination of uh, India inks watercolor ballpoint pens i love ballpoint pens uh just because of the water proofing of them uh when you run markers of it you just change colors and then people think that i did that on purpose it's pretty strange but these are these are a, a cat book that i'm working on 
This is one of the cats. This is one of the five brothers that Nick, myself, Peter, and Aaron saw in Africa, in the Maasai Mara. This is a big jaguar. I'm, Look at I'm planning to go to the Pantanal soon to see these guys in person and work with some biologists. This is a tiger from the zoo, actually, Hogel Zoo in Utah. I think she's just passed away, and then another snow leopard. I was supposed to go to the Himalayas with a friend of mine named Sandish Kadur, National Geographic uh, filmmaker, who's got Wildcats of India right now on Disney Plus, plugging his show in. This is a clouded leopard that he, uh, and I think I got one more. And this is an old Aaron Blaze draw, uh, picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went to visit Aaron's studio, and I stole this photograph from him, and <laughs> hey, I think this is the last. It was given willingly. Yeah, but uh, so I'm really excited about this book, uh, Big Cats of the World, and then I'm also working on a mountain lion book, but, uh, and then the coyote is special to me because I grew up with a coyote. You had a? I had a pet coyote growing up. Uh, very strange, quick story. Uh, we had some neighbors move next to us. They stole a coyote from a den at a young age. They moved away and left her. And my grandmother started feeding her. And her name was Nikki, and she was amazing. And now we have a soft spot. I have a soft spot for coyotes. What about you, Aaron? Where are we at with your drawings? Or coyotes. Well, I didn't bring a lot with me. I wanted to travel light. But I do have just the sketchbook that I started on this trip. And there's not a ton in here. But I do have... Um, I like to work on the Strathmore Tone Gray. Once again, this is I like to start with uh, um, a fresh sketchbook as well when I go on these trips. Um, and these are just very quick little scribbles um, just to get the gesture down. And some of you ask, well, why don't you just take photographs and draw from the photographs later? And we do. We do take photographs. But there's something about sitting down, drawing from life, looking at the subject matter in three dimensions, seeing them move. You pick up so much, even though we do know the anatomy, you pick up a lot on getting that form, that shape in, in, embedded into your brain. Um, this is my view when we found the wolf on the bison kill. I wasn't looking through binoculars. It was just what I could see. And sometimes it's kind of fun just to do that. You know, it, it's the whole landscape. And so there was this wolf off, off in the distance, about 150 yards, eating off of this carcass. And I thought it'd be interesting to include kind of the whole lands, uh, landscape in there and see what it would look like. And then some more uh, bear gestures. Those were the grizzlies, right? Yep, yep, the grizzlies, the mama, and the, and the two cubs. Mm -hmm. they're, a year, they're yearling cubs. They're about ready to get kicked out. Um, yearling meaning they're two years old, not, not fresh. Um, the, the black bear cubs that we saw today, those are spring cubs. So yeah. it just came out. And then that was the start of another one. And then uh, these are some bison that we drew yesterday um, up in Mammoth, Hot Springs area. And there's lots of little babies. All the, all the female uh, bison are dropping their babies right now. And so we've already come across several uh, bison that, one in particular, that was still wet and still had the umbilical cord hanging off and very, very fresh, fresh out of the oven. Which is part of why you like... That's yeah, one of the reasons we like coming here this time of year because you get to see, you know, it's the springtime. It's, it's the babies being born. It's all that kind of thing. Um, as far as a lot of the adults, they're a little bit ragged looking um, only because they've just survived a harsh winter. And so when you want to see the adults in their prime with the elk and their big antlers and the bear, you know, fully fattened up and all that sort of thing, then you want to come in September. Yeah. So there we are, there's a magpie I drew last night. And then very quickly, as we were seeing that mama bear and her two cubs, I just started to scribble really fast. And so um, she looks more like a grizzly, but, uh, but there she is with the two cubs as I, as I sketched. That's all we've got so far on that. Dustin, how are we looking at your pictures? Well, I got a lot of the uh, black bear today. But let me show you some of the stuff I was able to edit the other D. The other D? The other D here. So as uh, Dad showed, uh, there's a sketching of um, uh, of the wolf with the carcass. Well, I was able to get real nice close shots, real able to crop in and get real nice close and personal shots of that wolf as he was chewing down on the uh, on the carcass out there. You can see, see the look on his eyes. Hungry like a wolf. 
And then also at the same time, I saw the coyote out there. There's quick, coyotes. Quick question. Hold on. Hold that thought. Yeah. Jade says, I've been purchasing Andrew Loomis's books and Perspective, close to 20 books now. How many is enough to gain the quality of, of your guys' work? Oh, God. It's not about the books. It's, it's about really about the, 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 the pencil mileage. You know, you got to get in there and, and, uh, and start wearing down some pencils and pens and styluses and everything else that you can use to make marks. You got to start making those marks on paper and canvas and anything else you can. And I've always thought um, of all the art books that I grew up in, and, I, and Peter and Aaron, you guys could re chime in on this, but there's so much information in some of those books that like certain books, uh, I, I only retain so much from certain books. Yeah. You know, like Andrew Loomis, when I think of his name, uh, the first thing that I, comes to mind for me is landmarks. He yeah. taught me about landmarks, like in when you draw anatomy and bony this, landmarks, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So uh, uh, later on, I started looking at his advertising stuff and then, you know, learning a little bit more. But uh, there's nothing that's going to take the place of practice and, and doing it and, and, and making your own discoveries. Yes. Yeah. Books are great, but. Practical knowledge. Oh, wow. Meanwhile, we missed. He's gone in. Peter's gone in and laid a whole bunch of watercolor washes in, basically, right? Getting there, yeah. Just starting to lay in just initial temperature color. Uh, going with the warm in the foreground with the actual sheep. And then the background going more cool. Kind of offset them a little bit. That's a bummer. Using a flat brush. One brush through the entire thing. Not trying to get super specific detailed. Like even physically when we're working right now, like neither of us, all of us, are not nose deep into the work. We're not tense, we're not tightening. We're actually just being loose and kind of holding the pen a bit further back, being a bit further in distance, not trying to get in a position that's, you know, giving us overtly too much control. Uh, this idea of settling, feeling comfortable, you know, relaxed state is something that takes a minute to, I think, click into for most people. Because initially for young people, when they start to draw, it's such a high anxiety mentality because that burden of pressure, like it's gotta perform, you gotta do well. But over many years and decades, you know, you can start to kind of Let move go. into that mode much, much faster. Okay. If anything, we're already in there prior. So as we sit down, we're already ready to go in that part. Um, yeah. What's that saying? It's like, you're gonna do 10,000 bad drawings, so you may as well get them out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I, yeah, and uh, if that's the case, then I failed already, because I've done about 50,000 bad drawings. Yeah. <laughs> But you're not afraid to make bad drawings. You just keep drawing. No, right? you just get in there and draw, man. Yeah. So, so I'm going in right now with the number three Copic and just adding some tone in here. It's going to uh, lighten up quite a bit. But I like adding this tone, and then I can go in uh, with the pen later and push some of the darks. I can pull out some lights with my uh, Jelly Roll pen, which I'll show you in a little bit. Which is a, it's a white pen actually, it's very cool. Any new questions, Dustin? Uh, one second here. Really finalizing up the export. And we're multitasking here, so again on the questions, there's no way we're gonna be able to get to all the questions. <laughs> we're just selective. Jade says, thank you for your advice, guys. Cool. Okay, that's not a question. <laughs> well, there's no questions, so I just thought I'd bring it to comment. <laughs> And I'm sure there's questions on YouTube and stuff, but we're just not able to access everything right now. So again. Yeah, I think for us, it's, it's nice to hear questions and that's a part of what we want to do as well. But I like the fact that we're also just together. Uh, sometimes, this, you know, this is not something that we do you know, a lot. Me and Manny would chat with each other, have phone calls. Yeah. You know, Aaron, I'll chat with on text or Facebook message once in a while too. But mm -hmm. something like this is a rare occasion that we also want to ask each other questions. Like I want to know like how he's doing something. He's doing something. So we're all learning while you guys are learning as well, too. So there's a constant activity of soaking information and experience. Here's the good friend. No, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it's really, I mean, we get together as much as we can. It's usually, every time we do, we try to do, include art in it. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether we're visiting ruins or going to Moab or whatever, yeah. you know. I uh, had a, finally I got out to Aaron's studio and that was, such a good time. We got to see some some birds with Dustin. And that was a good time. Uh, 
those memories are amazing. You know, there, there hasn't been a lot of conventions to, to gather, but usually I see my artist friends once a year. So it's it's all, always nice to, and and this is a trip that uh, I moved out here about six years ago around this area, and something that I started doing and got invited with some other people and thought who would appreciate. And I know Aaron's in the past you've came out here, oh yeah. So it was just you know like minds kind of thing. Where how many trips is this out here for you, Aaron? How how many times oh, have you been? I've lost here? count. I don't know. I, I used to come out here all through the 90s as well. And tomorrow we're going to hopefully head to Jackson. I'm going to Jackson. <laughs> so you right. always got to put a song on there. <laughs> yep. So that we can never monetize any of these videos. I just, uh, dipped, my, uh, I just dipped my thing into whiskey. Did you? Yep. It's all right. It's healthy for you. Yeah. You dipped it in the whiskey. Yeah, I dipped, I dipped my watercolor pen in the whiskey. If you're a kid and you draw and paint, you never dip your watercolor brush in your drink and drink it? I've, I've, I have drank my watercolor and so dipped it in my coffee so many times. So many times. Oof, I almost did that again. Okay. Well, you got yeah. water over there, Peter? What do you I got? Do. Oh, you got, no, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Just, this is a refillable water colored brush, water brush, but I haven't... Uh, didn't fill it. Didn't fill it, man, didn't fill it. Do you want a little cup of water? No, I'm good. I'll, 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 share, I'll share with... Uh, I got whiskey. <laughs> whiskey. Whiskey. When Sir. sketching birds quickly, what tips do you have for getting the gesture and form down? It's the same thing for anything else. It's, it's looking at the big shapes and it's, it's literally looking at the gesture. You want to find that, that line of action through whatever that pose is that you're laying down and then build on top of that. Think of it as like the, the scaffolding or the, uh, the framework in a building. And you know, you're building on top of that. I really wish that I could, oof. I really wish that I could say a secret, but there's no secret to. There isn't. Uh, it's just repetition and repetition, yeah. you know. Yeah. A lot of us are very passion driven, so. Uh, that, that experience. I think a lot of times that kind of question also comes in with this. I don't feel like people are trying to always separate these subjects of like birds and you know this ram or the coyote and humans and cars. It's the same process. It's, yeah. it's all the same process. If one thing can bridge into the other, if you understand the approach and mentality of it, it's, as Aaron said, all about the big shapes and being able to recognize and register those proportions and shapes and forms. Uh, I think for me, I, I add to this idea of familiarity through archetypes. So whatever types of animals you're looking at, from fish to birds or equine animals, if you find a certain one that you're studying primarily, use that as an archetype to then bridge over to the other ones that are similar to it's it. A great, it's a great advice. It's much like drawing humans. You don't start by drawing people as your young kid, one specific person. And in terms of a training point, when you go to like classes and stuff, you learn about proportion, the human anatomy, and physiology and stuff like that. And you apply that then into live models and stuff. Um, so learn the, the actual inner structures of things. I've pulled up some YouTube questions here. Let me see if I can get some from our viewers on YouTube while we're going through this. Oh, cool. On oh, the twos of you, my uh, coyote drawing's got buffalo trays all in it. Nice. I, even, though you put, even though you put that there, Peter. It's going to smell good. Yeah. Yeah. But it's doing something weird to the watercolor. It's like doing... Is it, is it, uh, is it doing like well, an it's alcohol, alcohol right? Yeah, like so, an alcohol thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm not going to drink it anymore because it's all... Do uh, you ever paint with coffee? Yes, I do. Coffee, tea. Sorry, I'm trying to get a shot here without That's all right. messing you up. Oh, I love it. I love it. Let's see. What do we got here? We got... I know, right? Water brush smells like buffalo trace. <laughs> <laughs> Will you ever redraw drawings that you did when you were really young? I feel like that would be a fun thing to watch. Oh, wow. Uh, no, I, didn't remember, I, don't, I can't remember drawing that I did when I was young. And we have a lot of the same interests and subjects. Oh, yeah. the exact same image. I think they mean like revisiting something like maybe you did when you were really little, like how you would do it now. I think that's kind of what they're... Yeah, I don't know. I gotta show you guys. I've been drawing animals as long as I can remember. Yeah, so. so I'm always, I'm always revisiting it, I guess, to a certain degree. Yeah. Right? Aaron, will we be getting any of these photos as a reference pack on your site? I don't know. I gotta ask Dustin about that. 
Well, hopefully you have enough photos by the end of this trip that I might make a, be able to make a pack together. That's the Yellowstone goal. Pack. Yeah, yeah, Yellowstone pack. I, I'm, I'm hoping that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have something here yeah, that, that my grandmother shared more with more. me. This is I was one year ten months old when I drew. This is the oldest drawing that I scanned it in, and then I have one more. And it looks like a house, but it, these were both done on my grandmother's little uh, address book. That's actually pretty impressive for one year. Yeah, man. One, one year, un año diez meses. One year. Yeah, so you're drawing, you're drawing recognizable faces. Isn't that weird? Did you see that thing? Have you seen this before? Oh, nice. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, I, I don't have any... Can you revisit that drawing? I don't have any yeah. of that kind of stuff, but my parents told me that we were drawing, drawing things like that at a young age faces and but I was always fascinated by animals always drawing animals. yeah me too uh, it's weird how uh, uh, everything comes back full circle so a little history about me I wanted to be a wildlife painter because of Greg I mean, Greg well Greg Beach was one of them Bob Coon but yeah. uh, comic book artist try to break into all that ended up in animation uh, but all the drawing that I did was uh, Inspired by Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, Marlon Perkins. Yeah, Marlon Perkins and PBS and all that kind of stuff. So now uh, it's kind of neat to be working with biologists and then going full circle and doing oh, stuff yeah, that man. I love. Yeah. Do you guys date your sketches? Uh, uh, no, I married them. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> uh, sometimes I do. I just put years on it. I put years, yeah. I never, and there I am. A lot, a lot of my field sketches, I'll, I'll do the, I'll do the day, and the uh, location. Because one of the things I love to do is go back years later and look at them, and uh, so I like having the day, and the day, or the day, and the. Sometimes I even put the time. Here's a question. I believe you guys all do digital art. How come no drawing on iPads or anything? There's something very satisfying to me of drawing on paper and seeing accidents and colors and different tools mix. I love uh, digital. I work at digital, on my full-time job, I work on digital. So that's the only reason Look I- Get that uh, cool logo here, so. Yeah, cool, K-U-H-L. Manny does all the design for yeah. cool, and you, you, design, out there, you design some new, of the clothes, right? Look at our new bag. It's available on our website, cool.com. Look at this. K-U-H-L, right? Yep, really cool. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but anyway, you were saying, yeah, I, I love the, the feel of analog stuff. I, I, love, I love digital. I love, I love trying anything, uh, experimenting. As long as I'm drawing and painting or... But for me, I do enough digital work in my studio. Yes. When I'm out in the field and I'm out in nature, I want it all to be natural. You want to be more tactile, right? I really do. I want to be more tactile. What about you, and Peter? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So I'm just going to say, I used to, people ask me why, you know, do I bring my iPad out and draw with my iPad? You know, I really don't. I could, but I don't. When I leave my studio, when I leave my digital studio. Because, like these guys, I came up through my education primarily using analog tools. So this is where most of my uh, enjoyment comes from. So it's not to say that I don't like digital stuff. It's another just great tool as I see it. Uh, I don't think it's wrong for young kids to learn digital tools while they're also learning analog as well too. But for me, I was at that cusp where we all started with like, you know, traditional tools like oils and acrylics and watercolor initially, and then we moved into digital at the very end of it. Uh, so even for me now, I tend to kind of veer this still direction because it's kind of like inset in me at the young age. Um, but again, if, if I brought my iPad here right now, would I even want to mix things together? Sometimes I do like to do analog and then take a picture of it, go to Procreate, paint on that digitally. So the idea is that it's just there as an opportunity, but I don't feel like I'm forced to go there. You know? And we use it as a tool. Yeah, it's just a tool. Yeah. So. I think one of the issues from a practical standpoint that I've found is there still just isn't an answer for the screen brightness That's if you're outside. Problem. Yeah, yeah. I never run into the issue where the battery will die. Yeah. And it's like, oh, should I to charge it now? Or the pencil will die or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to just wait and sit around. But then I just turn to the sketchbook. Yeah, I mean, it's, sketchbooks never failed me. Yeah. So now what I'm doing is I've got this white pen, and I'm able to go in and hit some of the highlights on this, on this fur, these silver tip bears. 
so afraid I'm going to drop this phone on your guys' drawings. That's all right. <laughs> Just, it won't hurt it. Yeah, yours, they're in watercolor. <laughs> I'm going to fill up my water brush with <coughs> buffalo trace because... One squirt for you, one squirt for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's, in, He's getting some cool... Painting with bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> Or whiskey, I guess. You know, yeah. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Yeah, Buffalo bourbon. Trace. <laughs> <laughs> and this is still the middle of our trip. We got another couple days. And, you know, I'm excited. So we'll, do, we'll do some more live streams for yeah. sure. Um, I'm excited about, so there's a bear named 399 that they've tagged 399 in, in the Tetons. And uh, she's got, she's a 27-year-old bear, I believe. And she's got four cubs. and Four. Uh, four. And... She's and been, they're all healthy. They're all super healthy, and uh, I've been out there a couple of times and yet to see her. Uh, so I'm excited, hoping that with Aaron and Peter and the rest of the crew and Dustin, we yeah. can all see her. So. Yeah, those, those flying geese shot, shots. I think that a really good one here. Are you having a good time out here, Nick? I'm having a great time. This is my second trip, and it's just breathtaking every time. Even just even if you don't see any animals, just I, driving around is without going into detail. I got to say, Nick is one of the most resilient human beings I've ever met. <laughs> and just, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. He's just an incredibly strong dude, and I'm so glad that you're out here, yeah, able too. to unwind and just relax a little bit. Oh, it's it's unbelievable. It's been great. So what are your favorite spots in Yellowstone so far, and what are the best for getting good sketches? Um, I come out here quite a bit. Uh, I'm probably the one that's out here the most. Uh, my favorite is yes. the Hayden Valley and the Lamar Valley. Those two areas are, are great. Uh, yeah, the, we haven't seen anything in the Hayden, in Hayden this, this trip, but it doesn't mean we won't. Uh, I think we missed it by a little bit, but uh, Lamar Valley is so vast and all the bison are there, so they kind of uh, take up the space. If you don't see anything, you, you know, you can always see bison, but uh, I personally like the uh, Hayden and the Lamar Valley, and sometimes into Madison. Aaron? Yeah, that, it's, that's it. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> you know, in, in, in Hayden, you always, you're always guaranteed, it seems like, to see a bear or something yeah. in there. And we haven't quite had that luck this time. And uh, my brother keeps texting me. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, it, it was so fun though that right, both trips, I mean both, both, yeah, both trips, both mornings, we've had really good luck. Like the, our first outing right, oh, yeah. outside, uh, right outside Madison Junction, we saw a grizzly with two, like the yearlings that Aaron was talking about. And then now this, this morning with the, black bear cubs. with the black bear cubs, which are just so cute. That was my first time seeing black bear cubs. Yeah. Uh, Peter, anything in particular you your partial to favorite spots? I'm probably the, I guess youngest when it comes to experiencing you know this landscape. First this is what your this is like your fourth trip or probably my sixth. I would sixth? say in the last two years or so. But uh, the first time I came out was with Manny, Aaron, and a couple other people. I don't know what year that was. Is that 2018? When Cooper came? Yeah, when Cooper came. No, I can't remember. Uh, but it was a couple years ago. It was Jaw Cooper, right? Yeah, yeah. Jaw Cooper. Jaw Cooper. I'm sure there's Rich, a lot if, of... you, if you end up seeing this, you should be here, by the way. <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> David Cooper. Coleman should be here, too. David Coleman. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have a lot of interest joining us. Um, but yeah, for me, it's been a great experience seeing it also through their experience of eyes as well, too. So hearing about all these locations and the places they've seen has uh, led me to the kind of the same areas, essentially. You know, my my dream had always been, because those who you, those of you who know Guy Koholiak and Bob Kuhn and those wildlife artists, uh, growing up, I would always see pictures of, of them in Africa and with fellow artists and it's yeah. just kind of neat to that we're able to do that now together especially taking you guys to africa and yeah like be, meeting my friends out there it's just it was, it was just like that i get did freaking we, emotional about I that know. still man i, I know. do did, well did we talk about september yet we're going to be doing it in september yeah september we're hoping to go back to the masai mara to the cheetah tented camp we we're uh, timing it this time was different than last time yeah 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 so, I mean, that, that's exciting. I'm really excited about that. I'm so ready to see the, the lions and, and see our friends out there. For when, those of you that don't know the Maasai Mara, the Maasai Mara is a tiny little tip of the Serengeti. The Serengeti is huge national park in Tanzania, 
but it crosses over into Kenya and the absolute northern tip of it becomes the Maasai Mara and it's the richest of the whole area. The Maasai Mara is as far as wildlife goes. Uh, I got a couple questions here I'm gonna hit. When doing wildlife drawing, any advice on how to get your figures down faster while keeping your drawings in proportion with good line weight, especially with quick poses? Repetition. It's the same boring answer that we're just going to keep giving you. There's no secret answer to any of it. There's no, it, it, the best advice I can give you is doing it over and over again. When I was doing it, when I was younger, my drawings were sloppy. They had bad uh, proportions. I mean, everything. And, and they're frustrating and it hurts and it's painful and, and you want to throw it away and you just get sick of it, but you got to keep doing it. And eventually um, it gets less hard. I'll never say it gets easy, but it gets less hard. One, one, one piece of advice I can give, um, and it, you know, if it worked for me, well, it worked for you, I'm not sure, but I stopped using, I use broader, broader materials like a, like a broad marker or even like those China, those China markers are they called, the ones yeah. that you peel? Yeah. Just because you can't uh, hyper detail with those, uh, good point. You, you, you stay big and chunky and the bigger it is, the less detail you're going to pay into, did I get the eye right, did I get that claw right, you're, you're focusing more on the entire figure, on the entire um, uh, yeah. language of it, I guess I would say. So that, that would be my advice, is like sketch with broad, you know, broad markers. Uh, Which is how you started this one, right? Yeah, and I, I did, and I still do that to this day. Yeah, I, I went really broad, and these are great. I don't know how much longer they're going to be available, but um, these big, broad markers. But even like a regular marker, um, like the Copex that Aaron has, and yeah. Aaron basically did the same thing as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'll start with the with the light, yeah. broad marker. And, yeah. and this is a great illustration to to show that is Aaron just laid down what he needed. Yeah, you and can see it just it started out really rough, but then you can lay in all your detail. No commitment. No commitment to any of that line work that he's put there. Right. Exactly. Aaron, any thoughts on doing a trip like this for your members? Maybe they pay their way and you guys guide the whole thing? It's funny you mentioned that. You know, we've been doing our, you know, before pre-COVID, we've been doing uh, watercolor um, uh, and painting uh, seminars where we get together for four or five days. Uh, we did one in England where we rented out the castle. Uh, we did one in Sarasota, Florida, right before COVID. And as Nick and I have been driving through the park, we just keep commenting on with each other about how much fun it would be. Uh, we don't know the logistics of it or how we would do the infrastructure or how we would just handle it, but how much fun it would be to do an animal drawing slash painting trip out here with a group of about 20 to 25 people. And um, it would take some doing, but uh, we definitely want to do that here in, uh, in Yellowstone. Do you guys know Kim Jong-ji? <laughs> oh, that guy? Uh, he, he's a hack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We do not <laughs> One of the best artists in the world. Yeah, but what about him? You know? It's pretty obvious as to what you know, his capabilities are. Repetitious, repetition, repetition, repetition. repetition. And, well, that's, he's, he's a perfect example of, you know, just how, that guy just loves to draw. I think they were wondering if you knew him personally. Oh. I mean, you guys have all met him, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Peter, I, what? I still fanboy. I, I get nervous when I talk to him. <laughs> I geek out. Peter, what would be your tips for artists that still have a bit of a challenge with something like directly drawing with a permanent media like pens and and struggling with not messing up proportions and such? Well, I mean, this goes, again, back to that whole repetition what we talked about with that word. Uh, but when, when artists or professionals and teachers say just use repetition and do it over again, it, it sounds not necessarily um, so broad in, in terms of more details. Repetition is important, but not just to redraw the same thing again. What I tend to want to do is in my repeat of drawings, especially for training for young people, is start off without the intention of trying to quote unquote finish it. So intention in drawing for me is very important because the first step is to understand, let's say like proportion and shapes. So if I start with that, I stop there. I got the shapes and I got the lines. I don't need things like details of eyes and fur and you know surface information. I got that information I need about that specific thing, repeat. Now this is where the repetition comes in. Draw that thing again, but then now add a little bit more, right? Get it to a certain point of intention. Now I want to add a bit more anatomical details. Stop. At that point, I'll repeat a third time. Take it to another level. Now it's about the surfacing fur and the light and the value and all those kind of textual details. So the idea is that in a single drawing, you don't take it to the full, you know, 
realization of what that thing is, what you're seeing, and then messing it up and then trying to do it again because it's such an investment of time. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to get it to a certain point of a quick sketch, five, 10 minutes, get a couple of lines of shapes, stop, but learn how to stop. Then move on and repeat again. You know? <clears throat> or get a wizard. Get a wizard. <laughs> or just get a doctor who's very uh, <laughs> strange. <laughs> Aaron, you mentioned before that Brother Bear was inspired by Native American le legends. Where did you find those sources from? I live in the UK, so my knowledge is very limited. It was every, anywhere I could find. It was I looked up every book I could find that specialized in Native American myths and legends. And there's a lot of them out there. I can't give you specific sources. It was 25 years ago. But um, I, it's funny, I was recently going through uh, some boxes when I moved and I found every single bo uh, book that I had uh, purchased uh, during that time when I was doing the research. But I spent about a year and a half researching before we actually started to write. And, and because of that, I mean, the reason behind that was I wanted to write an original uh, Native American legend, uh, or, or at least write something that had the flavor of it. And I wanted to uh, respect the, the structure and the, and the way that they go about you know, creating their, their legends. So and, I got a comment that's relevant to what Dustin's showing right now. So oh, yeah. I said, so that's where the Canadian geese go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, dear, but that's exactly where the Canadian geese go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got really lucky with the with these two flying by. Uh, it was after the uh, uh, black bears, and we stopped to... Uh, see what's going on because there's another spot where people were stopping and were looking around and while we were waiting these two geese started flying through this canyon and so i just started shooting like crazy i'm just like please like let these let these be good and when i when i look through there's so there's perfect peter and manny you guys watching ufc tonight yes Ooh. yep watching i want to i'm actually playing for charles Oliveira. if you I'm guys on the car you guys don't know, Manny yeah. knows all those UFC fighters. <laughs> He's really good friends with all of them. Yeah. Beautiful. A lot, most of them, yeah. It's pretty crazy. That's how Ronda Rousey ended up doing a piece in the Expedition Art Book, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's all she did. Yeah. <laughs> I guess she did something. Yeah, she did the uh, Vaquita. Who else is in the car tonight? Uh, well, it was Nick Diaz, but he pulled out because of an injury, so they were yeah. going to reschedule that. So. Oh, Aaron's going in on that other bear. Going in on the other bear. Working on getting my darks in. I'll tie it all together here in a little bit. The mama bear didn't come out too great. I'm not really happy with how she turned out, but uh, overall, I think it's an okay drawing. How are you feeling about yours, Manny? Uh, I'm liking it. Um, the bourbon is making some weird, <laughs> weird like alcohol, like I'm doing alcohol pen thing. I keep forgetting and I am keep dipping into it. But, uh, I'm happy with it. And Peter? Yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun, if anything else. I'm honestly not really concerned about the end result of this piece. That's what I was about to say. It's just fun being with these guys and talking with you and, and everyone else. So it's more the experience, as we kind of mentioned beforehand, that I really try to be in the moment for. So. I mean, is this, you know, going to be a great piece to show off? I mean, it doesn't really matter. So, uh, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, this is more important, you know. Let's see if I can hit a few more questions here. You're very close to being pretty much done, I think. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> now I need to draw oh, the road Roadrunner. You got to draw the roadrunner. Hey, bro, runner's going to Bowdoin, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking forward to this. Any tips on layering when using watercolor? Start light, work dark. If, if, if you're doing transparent, that's the most basic piece of advice I can give you. All right, and I, I kind of jumped in there. Sorry, Peter. No, no, no. no. I do the same thing, too. It's for transparent. Yeah, if you, if, if you like to work traditional watercolor, um, then, and, which is transparent, then yeah, just start light and work dark. That's, yeah. that's a basic rule of thumb.
think we're going to plan to head back out, right? Yeah, yeah. we're going out toward to see if we see a, a wolf kill. Oh, that's right. So that's like five, three, or six. Yep. Yeah. We need to get out there and figure out directions to it. A lot of people are saying that if we do a uh, Yellowstone trip, they're in. <laughs> right yeah. on. See down. <clears throat> I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun, and you really grow as an artist. Just being able to be out here and experience the, uh, yeah, just the environment, man. The environment, the sights, the smells, the everything. You know, in terms of like meeting the right people, I get that kind of question as well. It's like, right now, I don't know anyone. There's like no one within my local area. Like, we can get together and draw a sketch. I only know people online that are like really far away. And some of those are really hard to give recommendations or advice to because for us, sometimes it's just by chance and luck, you know? We just got together and we happen to just know other people. It was a, yeah. You know, just that kind of... It's, there, is a, you know, there is a thing that goes with persistence. If you yeah. persist in what you love doing, eventually you're gonna meet other like-minded people. Yeah, and it just, sure. over time, with me, I've been doing this, you know, for 35 years, you just make connections and you, mm -hmm. and those connections grow over the yeah, years. Yeah. Part of it's putting yourself out there though. It Go really Going to events, going yeah. to stuff, sketching out in person and yeah. someone walks up and goes, hey, I draw too, what are you drawing? You yeah. know, and that's how you make artist friends and yeah. all. So many people talk about how they don't like people walking up to them and asking them questions when they're drawing. Uh, like out in the zoo or, yeah. um, and I, and I really discourage people from not liking that. I yeah. try embrace it. People are, they're truly curious about what you're doing and they want to, you know, and, and you, what, what you're doing is magical to them Yeah. and really embrace that and, and strike up the conversations and talk with them. You never know who you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. Don't be self-conscious. That's the other thing I get is they say they get self-conscious about people coming up and looking at us. They also say like, well, you know, I'm not good enough just yet. I don't have the experience like you guys. But in my opinion, there's always going to be someone that can learn from you. Uh, yeah. Someone lateral that's growing in the same direction as you are. So whatever information that you can get based on what you're going through, the troubles that you're having, you'll find like-minded people out there in the same. And that's that linkage that you're looking for. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I, I learned to draw from a kid that I used to sit next to on the bus that he used to draw comic books and I just thought that was the coolest thing so I wanted to do it and then I learned from him and then yeah. I started going on art school and then learned from a bunch of other people and then yada 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 you know but it's you know there for a while I think passion passions kind of connect each other yeah you know uh, for me I know uh, for those of you that know Tara Whitlatch uh, amazing animal and concept creature artist for Star Wars and I think worked with Aaron on Brother Bear as well, mm -hmm. but uh, Terrell had been trying to hook, hook me up with Aaron for a long time. He goes, you guys should meet, you guys should meet, you guys think alike, you know. So it's it's kind of a uh, passion sort of, they kind of find each other. Yeah. So said, you don't know me. Yeah, that's <laughs> you what don't I was, know me. That's what, I, that's what I told her. <laughs> you don't know my life. Yeah. Someone asked, any national parks that you've visited in the UK, any of you? I did uh, when I was out for the falconry meet, but I'm not sure what which ones they were. No, well, uh, I don't know about national parks, but we went to uh, Tiger. Was it Tiger? We've been to Tatton Park. Tatton, Tatton Park, which is I don't know if it's a national park. Yeah, I went to some. I, I don't know if they're national parks, but there were like wildlife areas. Yeah, game farms and things uh, like that. And uh, I went with another falconer out there, but I was in a place called the Cotswolds, and. Uh, that was that was really beautiful out there. And what was neat is I was there for a falconry uh, festival, and the after the the time after that was done, my friend said, "Do you want to go into the city or do you want to see the, you know the, the countryside?" I was like, "No, I want to go see the countryside. I don't want. I mean, I, not that I have anything against the city, but I'd rather see the countryside." And it was it was absolutely beautiful, all the thatched roofs and oh, the yeah. history, and so that was. And one of the best zoos I've ever been to is pubs. Like, yeah. One of the best zoos we've ever been to is uh, the, the Chester Zoo. Chester Zoo, absolutely. Yeah, that was amazing. And we were really disappointed to hear that they recently had to close down during COVID. No, and, and but, but they raised money. No, 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 you're not what I was going to say. The, Chest oh. the Chester Zoo is doing great. They thankfully raised a lot of money to stay open. It was a really good story. But the Chester Falconry place, oh, right. Sorry. unfortunately, had to close right in Chester there next to the cathedral. And we went there a couple times. That place was awesome. 
Well, so. we, we actually hired them to do some demos for us. Mm hmm. For part of our class. Yeah. Was there anything that they didn't teach you in art school that you had to learn yourself? I didn't go to art school. <laughs> So for everything. Yeah. Everything by itself. Yeah, a lot of it, you know, they don't teach you uh, live animal drawing is a pretty good example. Me, I think the, yeah, but the biggest thing is just consistency. Just doing it. Doing it a lot. And it's not something that I don't at least not a really they didn't really press it. Well, generally speaking, live animal drawing is not something you get in school. I mean there are examples where they bring in animals, but it's not I mean you gotta get out into nature. Oh, sure. yeah, as yeah. far as live animals. That kind of stuff. We go to the zoos and whatnot. Yeah. Those kind of locations. We do a lot in school. And for me, it wasn't technique. It was, it was the idea of being out there in the real world. Yeah. You know, how to, like, run, run a business or something like that. Uh, freelancing. Even just, like, running your own IPs and building projects and copywriting stuff. Or just knowing how to just talk with people. The business of art. The business of art. And how to present art. How to talk about yourself. How to talk about your work. And, and formatting in ways where... The work itself, yeah, will speak by itself, but you can definitely sell it as well, too. So, yeah, that idea of the use of the word. That's something I learned more just by going to shows, Comic-Con, yep. all that stuff, you know, being behind the table, talking to people constantly. I remember when I got my internship with Disney back in 1988. It was about, uh, I got after my second year in college, so I still had a third year to go to. But I remember, after the, I think the first two weeks of my internship, working with these professional artists, I remember thinking that, my God, I've, in, in two weeks I've learned more than I, mm. I have in mm. two years at, mm. in, in, at school. And it just became from practical use, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I've been experiencing severe hand pain from drawing for almost three months now. During this time, I've been resting my hand and trying to help it heal. I think the problem is I've been drawing from my wrist and tightened my grip on my pencil too much. I've tried drawing from just my soldier, shoulder with a light grip, and it's nearly impossible for me. My lines have no, no control to them. Any tips on this? I do. Um, weirdly enough, you need to exercise your hand a little more. Uh, they sell this little donut ring that rock climbers use yeah. that you squeeze in and out and uh, I found that I do jiu-jitsu so I use my grips a lot but uh, that exercise of just that with that ring and they sell it like in three different hardnesses like a really soft one and then to really hard one doing the exercises with that will help uh, I think being physically active in any capacity is gonna help the, I, I think it's always yeah that's always the, the thing the more the, 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 the human body is strange in the fact that it's the only machine that the more you use it, the, the stronger it gets. Yeah. So uh, that's that's my advice is to you know get you like a an extra even the old tiny spring things. Yeah. I but but, rigor, rigor, uh, but I find that the uh, uh, the distribution is wrong even if you do flip it over. Mm -hmm. And I like the ring yeah. a little more. Yeah. So it, it's a rock climbing tool that the guys use to warm up their hands and stuff. Right. But that that helps a lot. I tend to find working the forearms more actually helps too. Because people tend to centralize into the wrist and hand, but I actually focus on the muscles in the forearm a lot further. Great textures. But I think diversifying your movements a lot, so not always being stationary, get up. That's exactly what I was going to say. I find that there's a tendency of artists, not as not all of them, but as a you know as a as painting with a broad brush, <laughs> pun intended. Um, there's a tendency for them to be more sedentary, and I think. Yeah. It's not how our bodies were designed to be. Yeah. We weren't supposed to be sitting for like six, seven hours. Two, three hours is enough. Stop, yep. get up, move around, do something else, then come back to it. But yep. yeah. Use the bourbon. Use that bourbon. <laughs> what about like just a stress ball? A stress, yeah. a stress ball is better than nothing, but you need the resistance, I guess. Yeah. In my, in my opinion. I mean. Tried sketching my dog today to try live drawing. He did not look impressed. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Do it again. I'm afraid I might have offended him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really glad we got this to work. This is fun. 
And I'm sorry for those. I'm sure there's people watching on Twitter and Twitch. I'm just not able to monitor those questions there. So, yeah, if you want to ask questions, come on over to Facebook or or the YouTube. The Twitch people just went, no, I will never go to YouTube. <laughs> and vice versa. I wonder if bourbon has a color. He's just painting straight bourbon now? Yeah, I'm just seeing if it has a color. It's probably going to evaporate. It's going to evaporate. Yeah. That's what that's going to The rush smells good. <laughs> I love the smell of bourbon. Kentucky bourbon. So what I'm doing now is just hitting these, you know, the, the bear's fur along the edges tends to catch a lot of light. So you get these light kind of halos around the bear. See, art is sharing tools. That's what this is all about, right there. <laughs> people, people loving people. Stop touching my shopping. Have any of you been to the Zion National Zoo Park? Or Zion National Park? Sorry. Yes. Would yeah. you ever be willing to do one of your classes or gatherings there? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I Where is a, that? I got a Zion Utah. Boulder and, and uh, Zion You're... Boulder and... Yeah, Zion was one of the parks that, that uh, was part of our inspiration for Brother Bear. You actually live in Utah, right, man? Yep, yeah, I live in Utah. That's why I'm always tracking mountain lions. I want to be a manga artist. Any tips from Peter Hahn, please? Um, Why, just because he's the Asian guy? <laughs> uh, well, I've never done, you know, actual mangas and stuff like this. The only graphic novel I've done was my own from just two years ago. I think maybe they were just associating some of your art style oh, yeah, with absolutely. that. I mean, I was inspired by mangas and animes, for sure, 100%. Uh, but... Did I ever want to do stuff like that when I was a kid? For sure, absolutely. But I went more towards the direction of design, uh, which eventually led, led me back to comics. But I don't think I ever want to do it professionally still. Mm -hmm. But in terms of recommendations, I mean, it'd be training like an end of the kind of field, learning your foundations and fundamentals. But yeah, storytelling is a huge aspect to it, right? Um, That's the fun part, I think. Yeah. I, I want to do a comic so bad, I just don't know. And it's funny, because I come from the world of animation where you spend five years creating an animated movie. Yeah. But. Uh, sitting down and doing, I'd love to do a, 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 a comic book, but I just don't know if I could, I don't know if I could. Mm. I tried to break into comics back when I was younger and then I, I never did. And it, it sort of came to me because well, I went to so many co comic book conventions and uh, finally I just, one day I was asked to do one. Yeah, I looked at the discipline and everything, like like the Peter, yours, and all the, all the work he put into that and being consistent with it. It's like, oh, it's daunting. It is. It takes me a month to do a, a course, and I'm ready to throw it out the window by the time I'm done. I noticed that if you know how to draw people, it's easier to learn how to draw animals. Do you guys agree? I don't know that it's. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it's a that's a fifty fifty thing. I mean, the, the if, uh, anatomy wise, there's so there's a lot of similarities, right? But, um, eesh, I like doing both. But to me, it's not so much about the subject matter; it's just drawing in general. Yeah. Bourbon brush. Gotta get that bourbon. <laughs> If you ever make it to Zion National Park for a workshop, I'd love to go. I actually live right behind it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Learn 
We almost did a uh, concept art concept art dot org workshop in uh, around that area. It just didn't, a long time ago. It didn't work out because um, we they couldn't handle the amount of people we were going to bring. Oh, yeah. Since you said that you learned more from your professional internship, any advice on how to get an internship? Jeez. My internship that I got was 34 years ago. <laughs> so um, things have changed a little bit. Well, some of it. Some of it's still about a strong portfolio. It's a strong portfolio. Um, as far as the processes of getting in, I'm sure, like, having a decent website and all that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of studios these days do offer certain programs for internships and summers and stuff like that. Unfortunately, a lot of them require you to be a full-time student in colleges and universities. So being just educating yourself, it's, it would be kind of hard to break in some of those. But I will say in this day and age, the internship actually has become more mandatory as an experience as a young student. Um, as someone who's trying to hire like a studio, they want people with at least a little bit of you know, knowledge of how the behind the scene kind of works. So um, especially like an animation feature, they do a lot of that. TV, a little bit as well too. Games, not as much. I worked in concept art and games for about seven years. And yeah, we were taking interns once in a while, but it's very, very few and far in between. And usually it's kind of based on word of mouth, and it really wasn't a program. But um, a lot of it is very much based on just researching, as they said, through their websites and whatnot. And you can find some things like that you can sign up for. So. Yeah, your big studios have yeah. entire sections about yeah. their internships. Yeah. And... Did you guys see that the well, DreamWorks much. campus is up for sale? For sale? Oh, sure. Really? really? Yeah. The main campus? Glendale? Yeah. If you guys, if you think wow. we can pull together 300 million, I think <laughs> it could be ours. I'm done. Let me just let me just pitch in my ten bucks here. I had no idea. No. I know mine. Yeah, getting close. I think we're just about ready to wrap up. Yeah. I'm still just got a little bit more here. Almost done. Aaron, do you see any disadvantage to being left-handed in terms of drawing? No. Or you smear your ink more, right? Yeah, just I got to start on the correct side of the paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, it's it, to me it's no different than someone right-handed. You just got to think in reverse. Yeah. Scissors. Those are the ones that always mess me up. Drawing. Scissors. And it still bugs me. Yeah, because it's hard to find left-handed scissors. <laughs> it's so weird to me that there's even a difference, but there is, I guess. Yeah, they don't. They don't work. Feels like you could just flip it around, but I guess that's no. Just it not doesn't. Not it doesn't work that way. Bourbon marks. Yep. That's funny. So bourbon has a color. It's just called warp. <laughs> yeah. Warp. So one of the cool things about, especially doing foliage and ground and stuff like this. You can get in all these little dark areas, but notice how in the reference I've got all these really light bits of dried grass coming up. That's where these these pens come in really handy, especially over dark. You draw over the dark and create these really great little bits of dried grass. Uh, bison calf are so cute. Currently on uh, working some fun with it oh. right now. I think Manny's done. I'm done. Yellowstone. That was fun. Yellowstone National no Park. Park. Yeah. <laughs> we also we're part time jingle writers yep. as well. <laughs> Teton National no. Park. It's, it's grand. grand. Yeah. <laughs> You, sir, a jingle writing genius. <laughs> Don't hide that talent under a bushel basket. <laughs> hey, Sonny, you're a really good jingle writer. How would you like to be part of Egg Base A? Yeah, that's fine. You done? Yeah, I'm done. You? Yeah, I'm pretty much there. How I'll about you, Aaron? I'll do the money things up now. I'm adding a little. Well, a little bit of air and blaze magic. Environmental details. Air and blaze magic up in each brain. How do you like this? 
<laughs> they never, and, and they never left here. <laughs> What's that? My, my art, where I bought stuff, it's still, it's been in there for months. Well, it's fun. Fun? It was a gas. Yeah, what do you think of this one? Ain't, ain't that a cutie. Oh, yeah. Look at the color on them. What's the, what's the theory behind their color? Red dogs. Red I, dog. I have a theory. The wolves, wolves and canines can't see color. Is that true? I've heard that. Not all color. Uh, so yeah, man, there's a whole. They can see that. dogs yeah. in general. Yeah. So, they, so this is my theory with the with the bison and the calves, because they're obviously easy prey for wolves, or I shouldn't say easy, but if a predator came in, I don't know if the cow, the the uh, bison can see color, but um, if they could. That, that color orange is really easy to spot in a, in a stampeding herd, right? Yep, yep. That's kind of my theory, is that they... Yeah, that sort of makes sense. We should ask Terrell. Yeah. She would know. She would know. We should call her. <laughs> oh, man, he's going... Yeah, she did. I'll read Terrell's text this morning to me. You're going to love this. Yeah, almost there. Almost there. I'm almost there. Oh, wow. Well. well, that was a different one, but. Oh, dear. Did she uh, wish you a happy birthday? Yeah, she did, but it was just really cute. A very terrible wind latch. Yeah. That she's told all the unicorns to grant me a great day. Oh, <laughs> she's one of my favorite people on the planet. She's amazing. I love her. She's a beautiful person. And normally, you would call shenanigans, but with her, you're like, that eh, seems about right. Yeah. If anybody could do that. Oh, and uh, Becky had asked if we were going to do reference packs of these, but she must have missed that question. She came in late. The answer is yes, we are planning on having photo reference packs on the site from this trip, hopefully. Definitely, in the, definitely planning on it. In the near future. Yeah, I think I have a strong feeling we might get it. I no think this is what I say. I say we come back in September <laughs> to fill it out. Oh, seriously. So we can get the, you get the elk in their full antlers and... Oh yeah, true. The bear and their full fatness, and so this, this time of year you're getting the cubs and the babies and all that kind of stuff, and the guys coming out of hibernation, or what do you call that. it? Look at that. See, that's a piece of art right there. <laughs> that's art. I'm, I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not being, uh, I'm not being sarcastic. I love that. One of my fast doodles. It has all the essence of bison right there. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that background. Even yeah. how it's it, how his eyes perfectly framed between the bushes. Yeah. But I say we come back in September and round out everything we've got. I love it. And then put together a packet. We'll figure it out. I just did. <laughs> There we go. I think I'm done too. When painting in plain air, how do you recommend controlling the colors of your palette? I find some of my colors get muddy when I try to match animal fur. Don't no. concentrate so much on your saturation and your, and like, I've always try to keep things on the monochromatic as far as color wise uh, before because you can always sort of control your tones, I guess more than your color and I've noticed that in my own experience I get too I used to get too caught up in that like I'm getting too caught up in not replicating the right the correct color or whatever as opposed to uh, the composition the uh, structure everything mm -hmm. else yeah, I was going to say basically the same thing. It's just be careful of the number of colors you start mixing together. Yeah, and, and not having such a huge palette as well, it, it, it helps immensely. When I'm doing, doing earth tones, I try to not mix more than three colors. Yeah. 
And a lot of times I try to do it with just two, you know, using compliments. Let's see the final area. Nice. All right, well, I think we're gonna... Mama Grizzly. Say goodbye. You think, everybody? Yeah. You wanna keep going, or? Well, I think we're good. Thank you. Time to go see more. Uh, that was awesome. More yeah. wildlife. So we're gonna do this again on this trip, you guys. So stay tuned. Um, we really wanted, we've been wanting to do this for quite a while on the on trips like this. So this is the first time being able to do it. So we're really happy. Look at, see, look, look what he did. <laughs> look what he did. See, that's 50 years of knowledge right there. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin? Yeah, let's so national yes. point. Yeah. And uh, send you off of his one last little image of a cute little, little calf bison. Is that your lens on the table, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> yes, this is this is the lens I've been using. <laughs> what do you want them to do, Aaron? Draw. Go out and draw. And then come back and join us later when we do another live stream. <laughs> but get out and draw. Just get your paper dirty. If, you're, if your pencil isn't touching the paper, you're not learning. So do it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. See ya. Cheers. Come Cheers. on, Bebop.